Hi, I'm Rachel McLeod and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and emotional wellness coach. And today I want to talk to you about how to use today to get rid of symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress and resolve your anxiety, depression, or traumas and or traumatic stress disorders. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so that's really what I want to talk about is getting rid of symptoms and really resolving your whole disorder. And, um, and that's really a beautiful thing. And uh, I want to show you and talk to you about how to use today to do that. Now, I also do mean the perpetual today, right? So every day you'll be able to use the same strategy. And until your todays turn into stuff where you can't find any of these things to work on. And um, that's really a really wonderful way to know that you're done for now. <laughs> you move into a different phase, which is supporting your, your brain function and healthy brain function. So it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And um, if you've got a whole disorder, it's a quite a bit of work. And so I'm always trying to think about how to simplify this for you. This is what I do all the time. So in my brain, there's roadmaps and been there, done that and post-it signs and, you know, those sorts of things. And, um, but when I first did this with my own disorder, I didn't have any of that. And I know that I was just wandering around. And I teach you how to use interventions. If you're part of my Facebook group, you're accessing free intervention trainings all the time. I'm doing them monthly for the most part. And so I'm really working to give you tools for you to try out, see how your brain likes them. And um, moving a whole disorder is much different than learning an intervention. Um, it's learning how to use the intervention. Um, it's one thing when you get handed in your gardening and you get handed this big, cool hoe. It's another thing to learn how to use it to weed a whole garden, right? There's strategies involved, like depending on how tall the grass is or how many acres are we working with or, you know, so many things, right? It's not just about getting handed this tool. It's really how do we use it and how do we use it without giving up? How do we give it, how do we use it without throwing a whole fit and trying to break the whole, the, the hoe, you know, the, the tool, um, throwing it in the wall, you know, um, banging it on some rocks, frustration, right? Um, so I, I really, you know, I really want you to understand there's a process involved that is really, really wonderful. And I'm going to keep throwing it at you and keep throwing you different ones so that you can pick up the ones that really feel right to you. Um, and I want you to to see, you know, I know many of you are working with therapists, um, some of which are really good at processing trauma, but maybe not moving a whole disorder into remission. Or maybe you're just getting to know somebody and they haven't laid this whole thing out for you yet. This isn't something I find is common um, in our field yet. We're, we're just really accessing these powerful tools in the last several decades. But um, building a whole strategy for how to not just spot use these interventions, but use them to create function is, is something that's rare. And so it's one I want to talk to you about because my whole goal is to empower you to do this work for yourself or in company with support like with working with a professional and um, but so that you can do this for yourself forever and because as long as you are here and you ha you have a brain I want you to be able to work with that brain and you have access to using your brain right um, and I want you to be skilled and I, I want you to be able to meet your needs because you're not you know right now especially their their therapists are, are very where I am, everybody's full, um, everybody. And so that's a big frustration. And when you need help now and you're dependent on a professional, it can really create some blocks for you. So I want to open some other doors for you uh, where you are starting to get access to the same tools we're working with and some powerful strategies so that you can get the work done and get it done well. So that's what I want to talk with you about today is how to use today, right? Now, before I go any further, you know I, that when I work with anybody, the first thing I'm doing is equipping you with powerful tools, tools that work specifically with the survival center of your brain. That's the part of the brain that blocks your healing process. And so we want that healing process nice and open.
it that that survival system can block your healing process for an entire lifetime you can be stuck with symptoms and disorder and dysfunction for a lifetime because you're the process in your brain that resolves these things and and rebuilds uh, function in your life which is that's what your brain's there to do it's like let's build more function let's grow and expand when that process is blocked you don't get growth and expansion and it lets you know it's blocked with symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. Okay, so when these interventions are used, are specific interventions that work with that part of the brain. They also work with the other parts of the brain and improve everybody's function. But I love that, but I'm really, if, if they did, if they supported the rest of the brain and not the survival system, we would not be having this conversation. Um, I would still be on the lookout for, <laughs> for, for interventions that work with the survival part of the brain. That is really the important component here. Okay, and the interventions that I like and I teach people to use are uh, emotional freedom techniques, thought filled therapy, um, energy medicine, and EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. And if you join my Facebook group, Releasing the Baggage of Anxiety, Depression, and Traumatic Stress, you will find video trainings for those four and more. Um, and so the ones I really focus on using to take down disorders are emotional freedom techniques and thought filled therapy. Um, I use um, energy medicine and EMDR as bonuses, unless there are people that come to me and like, I only want to use this. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's use those. The other ones, I will start with those other ones um, because they are, they're simple to learn, they're powerful, and there are no known side effects, right? I don't hand people EMDR right off the bat because there are some massive side effects with EMDR. I'm not trying to do that to you. And especially when you don't have the skill set for that. Okay. But I want you to build your skill set. And uh, my clients usually will come to a point where they can, any of them can use EMDR because they've done enough healing and they've built enough skill so they can start using EMDR on their own. Okay, so that's the foundation of our work. Anything I'm going to talk about today, I am going to be talking about using an intervention, and those are the interventions I'm talking about. Um, to learn more, join the group, and um, and I'll when you get there, <laughs> I'll show you how to find the intervention trainings. Okay, or you might find them yourself. All right, I have to move this cord, otherwise I'm going to trip on it. Um, okay, so how do you use today? to get rid of your symptoms, okay? So from today, uh, let me tell you this. You know, you, we typically know what um, anxiety symptoms and depression symptoms and trauma symptoms are, right? They're flashbacks, racing thoughts, um, stump body distress, like feeling nauseous or feeling tension in your shoulders or in your back, rigid inability to relax, relax, um, restlessness, uh, excessive worry that you can't control, um, feeling slow, heavy, low mood, um, more negative towards yourself. Um, those, all of these symptoms are what we're talking about. And I always talk about anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress together because they really have the same roots and they are part of the same brain malfunction. Um, the, the brain will choose these symptoms based on survival strategies, right? Um, and it's function in trying to create stability and health and wellness for you and not being able to. And so um, they have different uh, expressions, they feel different, but I find that it's part of the same brain function. So when we get the brain moving through its healing pathways, it will resolve any of these symptoms because this is the brain's process for resolving those. Okay. All right. Today, what we're looking for in your day is malfunction, your brain malfunctioning. That's where you're getting symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. And we're also looking for um, interference where these symptoms are interfering in your life. We want to know where, when, how, why. Um, and also with mal, uh, malfunction, oh no, the, I, would, I wrote that down wrong, um, impaired function, um, where you are not able to be who you are. You're not, you're impaired with your ability to use your skills. Maybe you're trying to parent and you've been reading books and you have all these amazing parenting skills, but once you go do it, your anger is coming up so loud, you can't use your skills and you're yelling right? That's an impairment in your ability to parent. 
right? Um, and, or maybe it's impairment in your um, romantic life. Maybe it's impairment with your intimacy, with your sex life. Maybe it's impairment with um, your ability to um, answer the phone, right? Maybe that phone stuff's impaired. Doesn't matter. We're looking for it. Now, as you start to see these things, and we're looking for impairment and interference, you might start to get overwhelmed, right? But what I really help people do is just deal with the one in front of you, right? And so maybe the first day, all you're doing is you're just doing a little bit of work on all the things in front of you, right? Now, when you do a little bit of work on all the things in front of you, and when I say work, you are experiencing these things, you're paying attention to them, and you're using an intervention, right? So you're attentioning and interventioning, right? These are the two ingredients to resolve any symptom and to get your brain to move through it. Attentioning something, pay, putting attention on it, begins the healing process. But if you, if the rest of your brain is not on board, you'll just be paying attention to it and nothing is happening. And not only is nothing happening healing-wise, but stuff starting to happen symptom-wise. So symptoms will typically grow. If the, your whole brain is on board, these symptoms will start resolving. And so that's really why it's important to be able to put the two together. Attention, start the process, and help the process. Start the process, help the process. Start the process, help the process, okay? <laughs> Walk through your day, start the healing process, help the healing process. Pay attention to it, use your intervention. I have people do this for two hours every day. It's a lot, but we got a lot of work to do once we got an anxiety, depression, or trauma disorder. We're not talking about a little bit of symptoms, right? We're talking about impaired function. That means your, your, your sleep is impaired. Your relationship may be impaired. Your ability to work is impaired. You got some problems. Your ability to parent, your ability to fulfill um, your desired roles in life is impaired. That's a problem. We need to restore that. And you know, um, if you don't know, my specialty and what I focus on is moving, is getting rid of these symptoms and moving your disorder into remission in two to six months, right? That's not, I always have outliers. There's some people that, that really don't fall into that, right? Especially people that are experiencing ongoing trauma right now. Like they have past trauma, they have an anxiety disorder they've been dealing with for decades, but they've also got a current traumatic event. Maybe they're dealing with an addiction or maybe they have a spouse with an addiction or they've lost a loved one or um, they've lost a job or COVID has really put a wrench in some people's, it's a current trauma, right? So that, that really can be an impairment, but we can really, we can really do this work really, really quickly and really well. Usually those people that don't meet the two to six month mark, they'll, they'll, they'll fill in within the year. Um, and really get that done. Because this process, this is your brain's process that when it gets this stuff through the healing process, it, it creates an expanded way of being for you. Like when it's not, when, when you can't, when this system's blocked, it, it creates more limited ways of being for you because it can't go through its, its expansion. And as a matter of fact, more things shut down. There's more conflict. It's more, there's more debris in the road there's more garbage in your house, right? You haven't taken things to the garbage or taken things and found a place for them. You know, this is what your brain is doing internally. So we really want that process to happen because what we're gonna get on the other side of this is massive growth. You're gonna become, be able to be more of who you are. You're gonna be able to, to, to function better. You're going to have, take stuff, you're going to find stuff in your day where your function is impaired or your activities are interrupted or interfered with because of your symptoms. And you're going to resolve the symptoms in there, which is going to stop that in interruption, that interference. So you, what's, you're going to look for those today. Today, we're not getting rid of them. We're looking for them and we're interventioning. Now, what happens is if you start doing this today, tomorrow, you're going to wake up and things are going to be different. The stuff you worked on, your brain will work, will keep healing and resolving. And then today there will, they will, they will start turning. They will start either you'll get rid of some all the time that happens. And you'll, the other ones will take a different form. They'll usually be less intense or you'll see them at different aspects of them. It's beautiful. Like they start to, um, 
they start to process your brain starts to process them and so it's like if you were gonna process you had a bunch of tomatoes we're gardening today us if you had a bunch of tomatoes and you were gonna can them you're gonna process them right and so maybe today you would take those tomatoes and you would chop them up right well they're gonna look different now right and then maybe tomorrow, which you're not going to do this because this would spoil your food, but then tomorrow you're going to pack them in the jars. You're processing them. You're doing something functional with these tomatoes, right? And so they look different. And then there would be some of them that as you're cutting out the stuff you don't want and throwing in the garbage, your brain will do that for you naturally through this process, okay? So, so this is the stuff you're looking for during your day, okay? There's a couple of questions. Well, let me take you to day three, okay? So by this time, day one, but you put two hours in day three you've put um day two you've put two more hours so now you're up to four hours and you're gonna you're gonna keep looking for where 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 did you did you was there anywhere where symptoms interfered with your daily activities were there any functions in your desired roles that were impaired by your symptoms if yes you're gonna attention intervention attention intervention or pay attention to them and you're going to start your intervention you're going to start the healing process and you're going to help your whole brain okay and you're going to do this everywhere you notice impairment now one of the big things with this is that you're learning to see where your brain is malfunctioning okay many people who experience anxiety depression and traumatic stress disorders and symptoms just feel like I can't I can't do it I can't do it or they feel sad or they feel depressed or they feel hypervigilant or they they're feeling it but they're not realizing I'm having a brain malfunction because that's really what's happening here but once you say I'm having a brain malfunction you're in a perfect place to start using an intervention because you're attentioning the malfunction your brain knows exactly what you're talking about because it'll be like yeah <laughs> if you'll use the intervention you'll help your whole brain heal it okay so um, you're gonna do that now, by the time you get to four hours, you're going to probably move to the next day and you're going to notice fewer symptoms and less intensity. And you're going to start feeling a little bit more flexibility, cognitive flexibility, flexibility in your thoughts, new thoughts. You're going to start noticing um, new ideas. You're going to start noticing some new sensate, new solutions. Okay, now also when you get to this point, a lot of times you're clearing off your, your brain's plate for the day, right? It's like, we're going to clear that off now. We've already worked on that stuff and the brain will say, okay, that's awesome. But what about this? So you're going to probably notice some new things coming up. Now, I don't want you to get distracted here or be like, oh no, it's, no, that means we're moving. Things are happening. This is exactly what you want to happen. So <laughs> there's strategies for this. And really, it's so important that you don't get overwhelmed. right? We want you to choose the right pace and the right um, the dose for you. right? We don't want you to pick up this whole uh, problem and fix it now. right? You might say, OK, I see this whole problem. I'm just going to take this little piece right here. I can deal with this little dose. And I'm going to use an intervention and attention on this. I teach a lot of these types of strategies in my um, my online coaching program um, called Inner World Transformation, and also that I teach that in that in, Inner World Transformation is the foundation of my eight week intensive for people who really want to dive in and want my intensive support to walk them through moving their disorder into remission. Right, so there, so that's always available to you. But I, I want you to see your options and try to implement them and see what happens. You might be a natural. <laughs> you might resolve this thing lickety split, and you might find that this really does work. And whoa, I would like some more support. But either way, you're going to explore, you're going to experience, and that's going to do wonderful things for you. Okay, one, I know these and how these interventions work. I know they're powerful, but I also know that if you get some results here. Um, that's just going to free up your brain to start moving. And maybe there's another strategy that's better for you, right? So there, there will be some progress either way. Um, okay, let's see. So we're on day three, okay? Now day three, you're going to do the same thing and write it. Your brain said, well, now there's more, right? And you're going to keep looking at this stuff and you're going to see some different issues. You're going to see some new things, right? Don't think too much about it. Just keep using your intervention. 
and your brain will naturally be your brain will you're helping your brain work together and it will start resolving things on its own there because every day you have easy things to resolve you don't know that they feel awful um, and every day you have some stuff that's really complex that you're not going to resolve that day and you have some stuff in between you have some stuff that if you work on this five days in a row it's going to resolve right and so we want to go after that stuff right so you're going to do that <laughs> do it <laughs> no. um, anyway so we've got so we're on day four now we're eight hours into this well we're going to complete eight hours and you're going to do the same thing you're going to just each area where you have dysfunction mount where your brain malfunctions or you notice that you're impaired in one of your desired roles you're going to use the intervention right if you're at work and you are dreading a meeting and you're in there and you're you're you can't talk as well as you'd like because your brain is scrambling up. You're impaired. This is an impairment in your function, right? You're going to use an intervention. You might not use it in the moment, but you're going to use it while you pay attention. Hey, what's up with that brain? Why'd we malfunction over there? And you're going to use your intervention. I'm using. Oh, good, Lisa. Yes. Okay. So Lisa says, I can understand this. Thank you. Yay. Okay. Thank you for the feedback. Right? So so you i'm using emotional freedom techniques it's it's an intervention where you're tapping on different meridian points it's easy it's simple um it's not better or less than unless you think it is and then it is i love emotional freedom techniques i teach people this as like one of the first interventions we use um and so i'm just defaulting on this but really any intervention works pretty much the same way um so you can just plug that in and you might even have one in your pocket that I don't know about that works really well, we really want brain function moving. And so if that's the assessment tool, if your intervention works for that, do it. Some people really swear by breath work. I'm not, I don't know much about that. I'm not an expert in that, but I do know breathing affects the body and the survival system um, because it is a body function. So try stuff out, attention and intervention, see what happens. You can always fall back into using one of these ones that I know for sure is gonna work. OK, so um, day five, you're going to come in here and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to look through your today, your today, your day five today um, or your fifth today that you're working on. And you're going to go through and you're going to assess your brain function and your level of function. Right. And if you're so miserable that you can't, you're already in a symptom. So let's get that brain working on how miserable you are, right? And if that's the only one you do all day, great. Just do that one. Just do, I'm so miserable. I'm so miserable all day long, two hours. I'm so miserable. Seriously, I'm not joking. I'm giving you literal instructions. If you're anxious all day and that's all you got and you say all day, I'm so anxious. I'm so anxious. That's all you're doing. You're attentioning anxiety. Go for it. Because the thing is, whatever you're paying attention to, your brain, you can, you're, if the longer you can pay attention to it, the more your brain will bring up stuff, right? And so it's bringing all this gunk from the back up. That's where you have to be concerned with, with dosing and pacing because you'll, you, you it, the most important thing is that you're stable and you're steady and that you're doing this work and it feels okay. You know, you might even notice that you feel eager and excited. You're like, let's rock. You know, that's the case. You're at a good pace for you. And you might even be able to tolerate picking up the pace a little bit. If you're like, oh, holy cow, come on. And you're leaning back a little bit. You are, this is too much. We want you in the middle or leaning forward, ideally leaning forward. And so if you have to slow your pace down and, and by here, I would say the pace of how, what you're looking at, how many things, how quickly you're going through things um, and the number of things, right? The dose, I, maybe you choose something a little like, uh, let's choose something, Rachel. Um, you know that you're the impairment that you really want to tackle is sleep. Just focus on that when you wake up. Gosh, I didn't sleep very well. I never sleep very well. And you're just working on sleep. Even though maybe all day long you have other issues going on, you're like, nope, not even doing all that. I'm just focusing on sleep. I wonder if I'll sleep tonight. Oh, don't think about it. Because if you think about it, you're going to ruin it but maybe I won't wake up for every hour, right? Or maybe if I didn't drink my coffee all day, maybe I could sleep better. 
you know, and you're not, you, I don't want you to make any behavioral changes. Okay. Except for the only behavior change I want you to do is start using your intervention. Use your behavior there. Your, all your behavior juice goes into using the intervention. I don't want you to make any behavioral changes because I want your brain to lead you down new behavior changes. I want your brain to lead the way into your higher level of function. I want your brain to not only lead the way, but I want it to come behind you and push you forward into healthier behaviors. Because look, guess who is pushing you down towards terrible behaviors that are dysfunctioning? Your brain, okay? So we want your brain to change its ways, okay? And you'll know when you start to do different behaviors. If you go and say, well, I'm just going to go and um, change it. I'm going to start a diet, okay? Well, you're not working with the current brain function. You're not working with the current subconscious programming. You're going to work for with the, I'm going to go start a diet function, right? But what I would love to see happen and what I really help people do when they want to change the way they're eating or reach some health goals is I want them to lead with their brain function and watch their brain impair their eating and watch and intervene with that and be like, brain, what's up? Why are you leading us astray? Why are you leading us away from our goal and use an intervention on this? So the whole brain has to come to the table and have a conversation about this. Right? Because once the brain has to have a conversation about any topic, it will create change. It will create change and function in that topic. And so I would just want you to call it to the table about specific issues, right? And pretty soon what I have people do is make lists. <laughs> And call their brain to the table and be like, look, what's up with this? Okay, hold up. Okay, yes, talk amongst yourself while I do this intervention. And then, you know, I and I also teach, because um, I don't know how, I, I didn't think about this. Maybe I'll in, put this in here too. But um, I teach signals for knowing the work is happening. But I'm not going to talk about that here because this is individual to each person. And you'll want to watch your own brain function. You want to pick up on your own signals. So as you're doing these interventions and you're learning the first part of this, you're learning how to watch yourself. You're learning how to watch your brain, right? So by as you do this, you will start noticing because you're watching what, how, if, if, if your brain is working or not. I will tell you that some things you can listen to is like when you're brain, when you're like, what's up with this brain? And they go take it back and they go chat amongst themselves. And then they're like, ah, we're done with that. What's next? That's nice. Also, if you're like, what's up with this? And it's something that's intense and painful. Like, why the heck is my heart racing right now? And it's intense and painful. And they'll you start using your intervention on it. Um, you're, the intensity of that of that distress in your body will start reducing and lowering. That's a good sign. So there's lots of those little things that you'll start to pick up and learn about yourself, okay? And as you do the work, and it does need to be specific to you, okay? So having said that, okay, yeah. And so I teach people how to make lists and then to really pace this. They call their, you know, by attention intervention, right? You're, you're, you're not really calling a whole board meeting with your brain, but I like the idea. So that's the metaphor I'm using. So I, I teach them how to make lists and how to make things small enough for their brain to process. And then, and then I teach them how to call their brain up and say, look, let's discuss this, please. And let's review this function and what's up with this and throw it on the table and let them talk some talk amongst themselves while they resolve it. And you hold them at that table. Because let me tell you, they like to get up and run off. But ooh, I know something that looks like this. Let me go get it. Your subconscious mind runs to the back of the brain and brings this thing up. And you need to be able to have a skill to say, hey, you know what? We're not, we're not working on that right now. What about, let's just work on what we're working with. But thank you. I'll make a note of that. You want to talk about that? Okay, I'll make a note. I'll add it to the list, right? But this is what we're talking about. What are we doing here? Why is this happening? right? And so you hold your people to the table. <laughs> this is a skill you'll develop over time, okay? And so, um, but it's an important one and it will happen every day because <laughs> that's what brains do. They, they make all these associations and, but you can lead your brain. There are tricks for this. 
<laughs> you'll either discover them or you'll get more training or whatever will happen. You'll figure this stuff out. But okay, by day five, you've put 10 hours into your brain function for now. And let me tell you, after 10 hours, people feel pretty amazing. They can see that things are better. They can feel that things are better. Their mood is different. Um, they feel that they have more capacity. Now, if you've got an anxiety, depression, and trauma disorder and or, um, and it's been taking up a lot of room, even just a little bit of room can feel miraculous and like you are on top of the world. But let me tell you what, right here is not where you stop. And I want you to take a couple deep breaths of awesome sauce because now your brain functions better. And then I want you to get back to work. And you can even celebrate. And I encourage you to celebrate and be like, Whoa, I can think a little bit better. And oh my gosh, I have some solutions. You're going to have some solutions to some of these problems that are going on in your life that you're like, why didn't I think about that? And it's because your brain's job is to make solutions for you. And But if it can't get through this process, it can't make solutions for you. It'll just go back to the same ones you've always used. And you're like, I know this doesn't work. And, but it, because it didn't, it can't move through its expansion and growth process. It has to use old material. And it's like, this is not, I'm not doing this again, you know, but you will have to, unless you can open this door and get movement through. And after 10 hours of movement through you, your brain is going to be one happy place to be. I mean, it's from a brain function perspective, right? Because your inner healer and your prefrontal cortex is up there like, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff I can finally touch and play around with. And I'm just going to sort it and I'm going to think about it. And I'm going to rearrange it. And I'm going to see if this puzzle piece goes in here. It's going to have a good time. Now, your experience probably is going to feel like your mood is improved. Um, it's going to feel like there's more function. There's going to feel like some of these symptoms are no longer showing up because they will permanently resolve. Um, and there's going to be other things that you're like, hmm, what about that? Your attention's gonna wanna go to some of these new projects, right there. Because after about 10 hours, what you're looking at now is some of the more complex issues. These are not the easy scrub offs, right? This is where, you know, you've, you've cleaned off the counters and you've kind of, and now you're looking at what needs to be scrubbed down, right? And pretty soon you'll, you'll get through that layer and then you'll get to this, the stuff where you need like heavy duty cleaning stuff right? Stain, removal, I don't know, repair, stuff like that, right? But every day, that's what you're looking for. And then you're going to keep going. If you don't change anything, you're going to get to the end of this. You're going to move through your, you're going to move through your disorder. You're going to be able to create change. You're going to be able to um, respond to your relationships, your functions, fulfill your, your, um, desired roles better right so i don't know what that would be like for you because my strategy in the two to six month situation is very specific and targeted but i didn't have that when i was doing mine all i had was this idea of keep working <laughs> and just whatever's coming up today let me deal with it and as a matter of fact what's coming up right now let me work through that so this strategy right here will carry you very, very, very far. Okay. And there's some other things I wrote down. So I want to write those as well. And if you have questions about what I've shared so far, go ahead and put your questions in there. Or if like Lisa, you understand what I'm saying, please let me know. Cause that's just, I love that. It's encouraging. Um, okay. All right, um, the things you're going to be looking at, assessment tools for you, um, is or things where you know that this is a brain function problem is if you find yourself saying or realizing or understanding, I can't be who I want to be, there's a brain function problem there. Uh, and it can be resolved. It needs to be resolved. Your brain's job is to help you be who you are and who you authentically are, not who you were trained to be, who, what your subconscious programming says. No, your, your brain's job is to authenticate everything to who you are and to help you create solutions from there. So if your brain is not giving you solutions that you love and that help you be who you are more and more, you've got a, a brain function challenge that needs to be resolved, right? And so that's what you're going to start paying attention to. And you're going to start interventioning. Like, what's up? 
I just froze right there. I'm supposed to be saying something. I can say anything. I just froze. How am I supposed to be who I am here, right? You just found it, right? So now we're tapping on, I can't be who I am. I'm freezing or I'm fawning all over these people. Or I just went into fight mode. I just want to argue everyone down or slice people. I was minutes from my nail claws coming out. You know, or I jumped in my car and I ran off. How am I supposed to be who I'm supposed to be? Who I who, I can't be who I'm meant to be. If I'm getting up and running off all the time or fleeing the scene, right? So that's those are the kinds of things that you're looking for. And call your brain back and be like, hold up, what's up here? This is what your job is. This isn't happening. We need to bridge that. We need to cross into that. We need to make that happen. What do you need, brain? And usually these interventions are plenty of what your brain needs, right? It's It, it needs support. And, and really, I haven't met any symptom that doesn't resolve with these, with these interventions. So try them out. Um, uh, if you find that you can't do what you want to do, this is a problem. Your brain is supposed to help you do what you want to do. If it's not doing that, that means it's process for, for creating that that function and that program is impaired, it's blocked, it's not working. So that's really where you want to work at, where you want to work. Um, because you need to be doing part of your joy and fulfillment is you doing what you want to do, what you find fulfilling and expansive. And if you can't do those things, there's a problem with your brain function. And it would help your brain resolve that. Um, and that means also like if you're an artist and you can't art, if you're a painter and you can't paint, or if you're a painter and, um, every day goes by and you're doing, you're busy doing work for everybody else and you're not actually getting your stuff done. That's that there's, there's, this is a brain function issue that usually has its root in trauma. Okay. Uh, and occasionally, and, and usually you'll find symptoms of anxiety and depression in there as well. And so we want to resolve those so that we can free up your function. Because you got to be, if you're an art, you got to be arting. If you're an art, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a musician, you need to be musicianing. If you're a parent, you need to be parenting. If you're a parent and your heart's desire is to be an amazing parent and you're not, you're going to have symptoms of anxiety, depression, and probably traumatic stress. Okay, you're going to be replaying terrible scenes where you did not behave well. You don't need that in your life. What we need is your brain to help you create the function where you can be the amazing parent, the amazing business owner, the amazing partner, the amazing um, whatever. Whatever you desire, it's your brain's job to help you get that. There is no one like your brain. There is no one here dedicated to you and as powerful and creative to authenticating everything to you than your brain. So we really want your brain to come online. People, somebody asked me recently, how can I, um, how can I improve my marriage? Um, what, what practical things can I do? Well, the thing is, is that I can't tell you that. Because if I look at your life and look at how you're, what's going on, and I run it through my brain's processor, it will start creating solutions that are authentic for me, not for you. And so when I get these solutions out, I could share them with you. You might find them fun and exciting and happy and good. Um, and they could wreck your life because they're not authenticated to you because that's not what my brain is here for. Right. And so and and if we're if if this process of authenticating solutions for you is impaired and has been impaired for a really long time, you don't know what life is like with this partner that is here creating solutions for you all the time. And so naturally, you will keep looking outside yourself for solutions because you don't know that this is available and you don't know how to get this up and running. We need this up and running for you. It's important that this part of your team is working well. And then, you know, it'll hear all these ideas from everybody else and say, ooh, I like a piece of that. I like a piece of this. And then it will make something that's authentic to you. And you'll be like, oh, that's just right. And you'll, you'll start implementing it, right? So there are so many layers of this. And right now, what I'm telling you is a very simple plan. But in this plan are stacked functions. And I'm not going to tell you all about them. 
because that's not what this is here for. <laughs> this is to get you out. This is not a lecture and teaching you all the things. No, this is about getting rid of symptoms in two to six months. Okay, this is not about knowing all the things. But let me tell you that the the process of of move of opening this the door, getting your survival system out of the out of the way, and moving all this emotion and all these things through the healing pathways. They come from the back of the brain and they land up in the front of the brain, which is where you make sense of everything. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, and you'll have all these realizations about yourself that you will understand in words now because they arrived in the part of the brain where you have words, right? And so all of a sudden you have all this understanding and things start making sense to you. And then you're, you, what happens to me and when I'm working with clients is they'll say, oh, um, something profound about themselves and their own brain function. And I'll say, yes, that's called this. Like today, um, today I was working with someone and they felt this, like um, their values were clashing and they were like, eh, eh, eh. and I, and they were just couldn't, eh. and they're like, I know better than this and I can't, eh, you know, move. And I was like, right here, this is internal conflict. That's what this is called. You have a value over here. Can you see that? They're like, yes. You have a value over here. They can see that. Yes. And I was like, and there's no road between there, is there? And they're like, no. <laughs> I was like, okay, let me show you how to make one, how to get your brain to make one. And so, which is attentioning and interventioning, right? And so we started using intervention and things were moving. I don't know if we completed that process. And that's the cool thing is that you don't have to complete the brain work because your brain will keep at it and it will let you know when it needs support and more support. And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it just needs the work started. And then it's like, Ooh, I got it from here. Move, move out of the way because your brain is supposed to be doing this work outside your awareness. It's not supposed to be all up in your face telling you we're not okay. We're not okay. So and I need to pause and turn the air on before things get too sweaty. Okay, where was I? Um, okay, um, now another place you can look to find distress. Um, is uh, not distress, but impairment in your function. And I, I wanted to talk about impaired function today because I'm always looking for this. And I don't usually talk about this like this. And I'm going to in the future. Um, but this is the real juice. Because the thing is, is that we don't just want to get rid of symptoms. We want to rebuild function. We want you to be high functioning. I want you to be high functioning in every area of your life. I want you to be high functioning in every area that you choose to be in in your life. And I want you to be high functioning in such a way that you can even over have a surplus of function in the areas of your life so that you can have expansion and you can, you can fulfill the things, right? Wherever we have deficits, we fill them. We start to feel the lack and there's a particular feel to that. And we can, we can fill that and you can fill that with function. And we want you to be functioning in every area that you want to be functioning. And we want you to be functioning optimally and well, right? And so it's not enough just to get rid of symptoms. It feels good, but we need to repair the function so that it does, your brain doesn't have to create symptoms again, right? It doesn't have to. I mean, it, if you're right. So if, if you need to be here as a parent, let's just say, and you're down here, we want to get your brain to fill in this gap of function, because if that function stays there, you're going to have disappointment in there. You're going to have not enoughness. You're going to have sadness. And those are the, those, that's the food for depression. And that's the food for anxiety. We don't need that. Let's just, let's get that brain functioning up there. And it doesn't take a lot of time and it's the same skill set. And uh, it's just for a different, right? We talked about, I talked about this in a different video. Um, for me, my, my program, what I walk people through is eight parts. And the first four parts are going down and in to do healing, healing, healing. 
And then the next four parts are coming up to do build function, repair, heal, build in wellness. And so that's that I find both of those parts are very, very important so that the, the symptoms don't come back and that the, the disorder, more importantly, doesn't come back. OK, um, so and then some other questions to ask yourself throughout the day is how did I express who I am today? You know, and even just reflect and to assess it, look at it. Um, uh, how did you express how you feel today? How did you express your emotions today? Did you do that well? Or was there some impairment? You know, did it go not so well? Um, if you're expressing yourself in ways that you don't like, right there. That, call your brain to work on this. Call, the, call a meeting. Be like, what's up with this? We threw a whole fit. Bigger than our kids' fit. You know, or, you know, in front of all of our employees. Or, you know, whatever you did, right? Um, and... It, this is not a shaming thing. This is a turn the brain to look at it. Anything your brain can look at, it can start healing and resolving. And so I'm just being a little sassy with it because it's fun. But it doesn't have to be a shaming or mean thing at all. It's just very, it is what it is. Um, and sometimes we call our we call meetings with our brain out of frustration. And then we have to deal with the frustration. Like, I'm frustrated right now. Can we deal with that brain? Yes. Okay. And you're using your intervention. Um uh, some other areas to look for if you're if you're looking and you won't really need these things till about day six, seven through ten, um, because these are deeper, deeper issues. And, and that's the deal. That's why you want to get through this, because you you need to get to the deep issues. Right. We talked about this. You need to find a way to get down. Right. And so that you can come up. And so that that. Um, so when so I'm sharing this stuff so that you can get creative about your your lower, the deeper needs. Um, and so another question is, why did you do what you did? What was your motivation? Was it compulsion? Was it obligation? Um, did you have consent? Did you give consent? Did you have consent? Um, were there any boundary violations involved, right? Those are, those are, were you, were you feeling angry? Were you feeling passive aggressive? Were you feeling like you were in a survival state? Is that why you did what you did? Were you actually in flea mode? Were you in faint? Is that why you slept all day? Because you were actually, um, you, your, your brain function put you to sleep because that was the survival mode of the day. You know, those are the kinds of things that you can start looking for and assessing so that you can start addressing them. Um, uh, and, and these ones I've kept very simple, right? You know that when you go down, well, you might not know this. When you go down, you um, are frequently and often looking for the origin of where this dysfunction started. There are strategies to get you in there. Um, that is a fast way to resolve whole disorders, right? Um, it's a fast way to do this, this specific going in work. I teach that stuff in my eight-part program. It's available to you there. Um, it's a, most therapists are, they, we do this work. This is what we're trained to do. Um, we're not necessarily trained to do all of this stuff. Um, but right here, this is this is a lot of what EMDR is about. This is a lot. This is where trauma processing, right? You can do your own trauma processing. And you can stay at today level and resolve your whole disorder. Because the fact of the matter is everything that's going on today, your brain is making associations from the past. If you're working on stuff from today, you will also be working on stuff from the past. And you will get little bits of desensitization going on to all the past events, little by little. And there's more that goes on with that, that it's awesome. But I think that's that's really the instruction I really want to give you right now. So uh, there's, but I really want you to hear there's so much you can do for yourself. There's so many ways to resolve your disorder and, um, and to get your freedom and your flexibility and your wellness back and your function. And um, it is really a special, beautiful thing if, you know, this, these disorders impair your function and interfere with your life in so many ways to get your function back. And then not only that, but become high functioning is amazing. It is, it is noticeable. I can't tell you how many clients tell me, like their friends are like, what did you do? Tell me what you did, you know, or who are you seeing? How did this happen? You know, what, how did this transformation take place? And, um, and because it is noticeable. 
and so be play around you know do what you can do with this and and get help if you need it you know like i talked about earlier this is something that i i've made available for online study you can join my online program and, and walk through this um, i will walk you through that online <laughs> in an online program and then i have that intensive program where i am providing intensive support um, through email and then four hours of face-to-face -face, uh, small group meetings and um, that are very very powerful and effective and so where these are small group meetings only because while you're using interventions I would just be sitting there twiddling my thumbs which drives me nuts um, but what I found is by stacking function and by adding um, I keep the group member group under five it's usually around one to four. Um, by adding more people, while you're working on something, I can be helping somebody else and going down the line and coming back and giving everybody individualized attention. And you're, it really helps people to make connections, feel like they're not alone in the world. And frequently when somebody's dealing with something, it's similar to what somebody else is dealing with. And then sometimes there's words in between and like, Oh, and that really helped me and had that perspective and and then people ask questions that other people didn't it's just been wonderful um, I was afraid of going into a small group because I did I'm used to working one-on-one -on -one, but I noticed how much time I was sitting waiting <laughs> while people were using interventions and I thought let's take a leap of faith and try amazing so it's really really phenomenal to do these in small groups and um, and I am doing that with um, women, men, and teens, um, and an all genders group. So, um, or for all genders, yeah, all gender group. So um, if that's something you want my help with, learn more about it, go to my Facebook page, read through um, the options, the different options of working with me, and see what, what you like, see what interests you, see what feels right, and then reach out to me. Um, on the page, there's ways to reach out to me. You can see the next steps there. And um, I will we'll, we'll chat and we'll get you started. It's very, very easy to enroll in my programs. Okay, so, uh, and you're welcome to join my Facebook group where I'm teaching these interventions and where you can try them out. And I am gonna keep talking about how to, how to overcome and resolve your anxiety, depression, and or traumatic stress disorders. Uh, here because you can you really can and I really feel like I know that when you get the tools you can do this work as well if not better than any professional just because if you're tuning into yourself and you're learning that you're building so many skills and then you're learning skills for you and then you're learning about how you need the support when you need the support and you're not held back by anybody's schedule you're not held back by, oh, sorry, my calendar's full. I can't get you until next month. No. You can keep helping yourself. And maybe your appointment is next month, but you can do a lot of work in between sessions for yourself and make a lot of progress. So that is what I have to say. Let me read some of what's going on here. Lisa is having is chatting it up over here with me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, she has chronic pain disorder, but she's still here. Yeah, you know, um, I am not familiar with that. It makes me want to Google. Is that the official name? That's my first question. Um, Okay, I'm seeing stuff. Um, awesome, thank you, Melissa. Good to see you. Um, I'm a huge Melissa fan, Melissa Ballin. Um, okay, so chronic pain. Okay, I love working with um, chronic pain. I love working with all kinds of physical pain um, because in every problem that we will ever have, there is an emotional component to the problem, a mental component, a, an energetic component, a physical component, no, a chemical component, physical, chemical, right, same, we'll put that in the same family, and spiritual component. Now, I'm not so certain what this one means. That's kind of the definition of spiritual is who knows, right? It's not a 
something we scientifically measure yet. Um, so, um, but when you have physical pain and you work on the energetic, emotional and mental aspects of this, you can create some massive change. And sometimes if these pains are somatic, they will resolve completely. And then you feel all magical, but you're not. You just help the body do its healing work. Um, for instance, I have been having lower back pain and to the point where I could not sit for more than 10 minutes. And that has been a wonderful teacher for, teacher for me and it's resolving. Um, what I found is I started um, holding some points on the kidney meridian and I went from being able to sit 40 minutes, I think I was, I was at 40 minutes with chiropractic care and healing time. But once I started using, um, working with kidney meridian, all of a sudden I was able to sit for two hours at a time. Now I, I'm up to like three uh, to four. So I just have to move, which is good for me, right? Because as a therapist, you sit on your tail end all day. Anyway, so that was just one incident. I had another client that had this foot pain and we we worked on um, a, a memory, an origin memory, and that foot pain resolved. As a matter of fact, the foot pain took us, led us to the um, to the original memory, which is always interesting because um, body sensations are connected very specially. I bet there's a whole like they've hooked people up to brain things and they can see what the brain is doing, but the body has when it you have sensations in the body they are associated very directly with your memory so you can tune in and pay attention to a sensation and and use some tricks to bring up the first memory where you ever felt that sensation in your body and so it's really wonderful to do this and to see what happens um not i don't that's all I have to say, seeing what happens, being curious, being open and seeing what happens. But um, a lot of times as we resolve some of these issues, it will take down the whole thing. Sometimes it just will improve it. And sometimes we just get all this new insight and it, it shoots off growth in a whole nother area of our life, right? Because we, I think of these things as teachers. I like to, you know, I like to graduate from some of their programs uh, like chronic pain. Uh, that's program I want to be graduating from and so I like to look at them as like what is the lesson here and so sometimes they um, that can bring up a well and not just that let me tell you what your subconscious mind will throw itself and the the function it wants to create at anything in your life right so if you choose a, a pain in your body like arthritis let's say in your hand if you pay attention to this arthritis you can have a whole out conversation with your subconscious mind and see what issues it wants to resolve and resolve them for it, for your subconscious mind. It will do it with anything. It'll do it with that chair in the back there, right? Um, so that's really, that. there's so much power and healing in these things. Not that they're not awful. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about amazing brain function and, um, and the awesomeness of the brain and in healing. And so... Anyway, I, I, with my clients that have chronic pains or, um, disorders like autoimmune disorders and things like that, we, we really go after the emotional and mental and energetic components of those. So, uh, let's see. CRPS. Okay, so I'll look that up here in a little bit. Um, swimming has helped. Wonderful. Okay, good. Um, yay. Yes, yes. Nobody understands these things. And that's the real deal. Um, yeah, nobody really understands these things. I share my, my idea with you because it's fun to take things apart and see where healing can happen. But I wasn't really going to say this, but I'm going to see if I can say it well, because it's, it's a belief that I'm exploring. Let me see if I can do this. Um, I think it's simple. Okay. So that we don't know, like, I, I think that we're here doing some soul journeying work as for our own expansion, I think, who knows. And we never know what's 
what's what why these teachers are in our life i think that's as simple as i'm gonna say that um so anyway i'm absolutely i'm with melissa i think that's the best idea i absolutely am also sending compassion love and light to you lisa in this in what you're going through and uh, and let us know how that goes and if, if any of this work helps you tell us tell us especially work on your spine you know the work on your spine that you're talking about um it'd be interesting to see what what can happen there and what your subcon how your subconscious mind could really resolve and yes and um and and really heal so good and then she says it helps with my PTSD and I'm, and I'm spiritual. Everything helps as long as you keep smiling. There we go. And, and, you know, I think that that's some of these really painful challenges we go through. They can take us anyway. They can take us into bitterness and, um, and trauma and being traumatized, or they can take us into expansion and, um, but it's when we're on the ride with them, we're going to go someplace, you know, and this, this, the, doing this work with our emotions and our, our mental, uh, our mental function and, and our energetic function really helps us get to decide where we're going to go, have some influence and in where we're going to go, which path we're going to take. If we're going to go down bitterness or we're going to come down, um, joy creation. And can we create joy in some of these really awful situations? I would say from what I've seen with brain function, yes. I've seen wild things. Um, so I think that's all I have to say for today. This was really wonderful. It's getting late over here for me, so I'm going to jump off. And I hope this helps. I hope you enjoy this. I hope that you get to really look at your today and go after it. And let me tell you, if you work through one issue every day, phenomenal, right? Some of you will be able to work on four issues each day. Some of you will be able to do 10. Some of you will be able to surf through and be like all day long, whatever, come at me. Whatever you can do, feel inclined to do and want to do, do it. Do it. Good. And so, yeah, I hope that guide helps you. If you want to learn more, or you want my support, or you want to jump in a program I've got going on, go ahead and look at my website and I hope and remember my Facebook group, jump in there, learn some interventions, and give them a try. You're welcome, Lisa, and good to see you around here, Melissa, and I'll see you all later. Bye.